Hi everyone. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to configure all the default settings of the Mashbooth app. Before you begin, be sure to watch our previous videos on how to create your Dropbox folders and how to transfer and sync photos to them. This video assumes that you've already created the folders needed for an event in Dropbox. Okay, so let's get started. I'm here at the default settings screen of my web browser. You can log into your settings remotely from anywhere by typing in app.mashbooths.com slash sign underscore in into your web browser. Your default settings are basically your master settings for every new event that is created. So whenever you create a new event over here in this events tab, these default settings are going to automatically copy over to them. Also, it is important to know that the app will default to these settings anytime a specific event is not assigned on the iPad. But keep in mind that you will not be able to collect emails if an event is not assigned on the iPad. Okay, to start off, the first thing I need to do is link my Dropbox folders. I'm gonna press on Link Dropbox Account, and this prompts me to log into a Dropbox account. Now all I need to do is sign into the exact same Dropbox account that I set up earlier when creating Dropbox folders in my computer. All right, so now my Dropbox account is linked. Now all I have to do is enable what folders I want to appear on the Mashbooth app. I want prints to appear, so I'm going to enable photo strips. Photo strips and prints are the same thing. If you're using Mashbooth for event photography, you're probably going to want to disable prints and only enable singles. Now, I'm just going to tap here where it says Select Folder on Dropbox. I'm going to tap on Events, tap on YouTube Party, and finally, check off this little circle next to the Prints folder. Now I'm just going to tap on the green Select button down here towards the right. And that's it. My first Dropbox account folder is linked. Now I'm just going to quickly repeat the same steps for the rest of the Dropbox folders. And as I'm doing this, I just want to mention that the Mashbooth app is capable of sharing GIF files that are made by your photo booth software. And it's also capable of making GIFs with any of the images that are stored in your singles folder. So even if you don't have any GIF files from your photo booth software, we recommend that you link any empty GIF folders here anyway. A linked GIFs folder is required for the Mashbooth app to make GIFs. Okay. So now I want to link my overlays. I've actually already uploaded my own custom overlays to my Dropbox. So just to quickly show you what it looks like, here they are, right here in my Dropbox folder called Overlays. You can use any overlays here that you want, just so long as the files are in PNG format and the exact same dimensions as the singles and GIFs that your photo booth software makes. My singles overlay is 1,844 by 1,240 pixels, and my GIF overlay is 768 by 768. Okay, so the first thing I need to link is my GIF overlay. So I'm just going to repeat the steps of clicking through until my GIF overlay is selected. Click on Select Image on Dropbox. Click on Events. Click on YouTube Party. Click on Overlays. And this time, I'm going to click on my actual GIF overlay file and click Select. Okay, so my GIF overlay is now selected. Now I'm going to link my Singles overlay. Again, click on Select Image on Dropbox. Click on Events. Click on YouTube Party. Click on Overlays and click on my Singles Overlay file. Okay, now that all my folders and overlays are linked, I'm ready to set up my social sharing buttons. To do this, I'm simply going to enable what sharing buttons I want to use. So I'm just going to enable all of them. And for my default Facebook message, I'm just going to type hashtag hello world and copy and paste this to my Twitter message as well. A couple of things I want to point out as I'm doing this. Your Facebook app ID 
and Twitter app Consumer Key aren't needed for social sharing to work. But if you want even more customization for these share buttons, be sure to refer to the Help section of the app for additional instructions on how to set them up. Also, for Instagram sharing to work, be sure to download the iPhone version of the Instagram app on your iPad. You'll need the Instagram app installed separately for Instagram posting to work. Okay, so now I'm ready to set up emailing. Email from is the email address that guests will see as the sender when they receive their emails. For my email from, I'm going to type no reply at mashbooths.com. You can use any email address here that you like, just so long as the company email is not restricted by any type of firewall. For the email subject, I'm going to type, your photos are here. And for the message, I'm just going to leave it blank. So here, where it says email template, this is where you should upload your own company logo in JPEG format. It's a great way to market your own company since every guest who emails themselves their photos will see this in the body of their emails. To do this, just click on the Edit Mode button and click on any of the Insert Slash Image icons here on the far right. For now, I'm actually going to leave it the way it is, so I'm just going to cancel out of here. Now, down here is where you'll be setting up Twilio text messaging. For this, you'll need a Twilio SID token and phone number. You can refer to our help section to learn how to obtain these, but for now, I'm just going to disable it. And here's where you would enable printing if you want to allow guests to print extra copies of photos directly from the iPad. For this to work, your computer would need to be connected to an AirPrint compatible printer and have an AirPrint server installed such as Presto by Colobos. You can learn more at www.colobos.com. Typically, we don't like to use this feature, so I'm just going to disable it. And finally, the last option on this screen is the text-only sharing buttons. You can turn this on if you want guests to see the words on the sharing buttons instead of icons. But, again, I'm just going to disable it. All right, so these are pretty much all the settings I want to keep as my default setting. Now I'm just going to click on this Save Settings button down here, and that's it. From now on, every event that I create will copy over all of these exact same settings, and anytime the iPad is not assigned to an event, these are the settings the Mashbooth app will default to. Be sure to watch my next video on how to create new events and assign events to your iPad.